How Diego Simeone is tactically reinventing Atletico Madrid this season. In this video I'll first be breaking down how Simeone's side played last season and in prior seasons both offensively and defensively and discuss the strengths and limitations of this system, before looking at how he has started to change his setup in certain areas this season and why he may have done this. So keep watching to the end for the full in-depth analysis. I've put time markers in the description below so if you're already familiar with how Afletco previously played you can skip ahead to my analysis of them this season. But before this video starts make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you get notifications when we release a video and check out some of our recent uploads including the first episode of our Player Rose Explained series which was a tactical explanation of what a Trequatista is along with some examples. With no league title since the 2013-2014 season and not getting past a round of 16 in the Champions League in the last two campaigns, it seems that the style of play and system that Simeone was once known for at Atletico Madrid is no longer as productive as it once was. That's why this season after selling Griezmann, Rodri and Lucas Hernandez and with veterans like Godin, one friend and Felipe Luiz leaving the club, it seems that Simeone is starting to transition his side style of play which is why he's brought in the likes of Jao Felix, Renan Lodi, Mario Hermoso, Kieran Trippier and Marcus Llorente. So what was the system that Simeone had been using at Atletico Madrid prior to this season? Since Simeone arrived at the club, he favoured a structured 4-4-2 system, playing with two conventional forwards at the top of the system, whilst one if not two of the wide midfielders were natural central midfielders who would move in field to create a narrow four-man midfield. Atleti would defend in a deep block, which suited their defenders who lacked pace but were excellent positionally and aerially from crosses. Out of possession Simeone's side would be compact, with every player behind the ball when the centre backs or deep line central midfielders had the ball in their own half. Despite playing with two forwards, both of these players, in this case David Villa and Diego Costa, in the 2013-14 title winning season, would drop back behind the ball, creating a box with the midfielders behind them, Thiago and Gabi, which would cut out the passing lanes into the opposition central midfielders, thereby forcing them out wide to the fullbacks, nullifying the influence of players like Modric and Kadira on the game. With the wide midfielders Coca and Raul Garcia playing incredibly narrow, this would give the opposition's fullback space and time on the ball, but this wasn't an unintentional consequence of the system, it was carefully calculated by Simeone. Out of everyone on the field, the fullbacks are in the worst positions to create when they are sat in the middle third, so allowing the ball to go out to them isn't as dangerous as it would be to allow the central midfielders space and time on the ball. When the ball would advance down the flanks to the wide players, it wasn't the wide midfielders who would move out to close them down, it would be the fullbacks, one Fran and Felipe Luiz. This was done in order to stop sides switching the play quickly back and forth to the wide players stretching the midfield four and creating spaces in between the centre midfielders and wide midfielders. If most sides however tried this sort of pressing system, opposition attackers would simply underlap their wide players, make runs into the space between the centre backs and full backs, but under Simeone, Koke and Raul Garcia had excellent positional awareness to move deeper to cut out these passing lanes and the central midfielders were excellent at tracking their runners into this space which is why Adetti was so defensively excellent in this system. In attack they would look to play direct up to the forwards from the back line or centre midfielders. The wide midfielders wouldn't look to stretch the pitch like conventional wingers, instead they were both inverted wide midfielders who would move ahead of the midfield double pivot into the half spaces. The fullbacks one friend of Felipe Luiz would advance to provide the width in the system, with the deep double pivot acting as cover in those wide positions if there was a turnover. Their main attacking pattern was looking to transition the attack quickly after a turnover using direct balls up to the forwards in order to get the likes of Koke and Raul Garcia in the half spaces from where they could look to play balls in behind the back line for someone like Costa or feed the ball out wide for the fullback to provide a cross into the box. Despite success with the system from 2012 to 2017, Atletico have been underwhelming in the last two seasons, but why has there been a decline? Well the main problem for Simeone's side was that they couldn't break down teams who defended in a deep block or press the two central midfielders aggressively. This was because playing essentially central attacking midfielders like Koke, Angel Correa or Lamar in wide positions meant that the side lacked pace and dribbling ability, with one friend of Felipe Luiz not providing this either, meaning that Afletico found it hard to break down sides who were compact and cut out the passing lanes into the half spaces, forcing the ball out wide to the fullbacks who couldn't beat the opposition's fullbacks in one on ones and weren't particularly effective deep crosses. This often led to Atletico Madrid dropping points against lesser La Liga sides who they couldn't break down. In bigger games, in particular in the Champions League where Atletico Madrid were often dominated in possession terms, teams realised that the deep line central midfielders were the centre point of Atletico Madrid's attacks and if they pressed aggressively in a man-to-man -man system, the ball would be forced to the centre backs or full backs who weren't very good on the ball players, so would often play long inaccurate balls up to the forwards and concede possession. 
In many games, for example against Juventus last season when they lost a 2-0 first leg lead, this type of pressing style from Allegri meant that Fletti couldn't sustain possession and gifted the ball back to Juve, allowing Juventus to sustain attacks and pressure, forcing Atletico Madrid's wide players and centre forwards deeper, making it increasingly hard for Simeone's side to be able to counter when they won the ball back. Atletico almost allowed and willed the opposition side to dominate possession in their half, being far too cautious in their build-up and not being adventurous enough when pushing players forward. When under constant pressure from the start of the match, being forced back into your defensive third, it only takes a few individual defensive errors or a moment of magic from the opposition to kill your whole game plan. So how has Simeone tactically reinvented this newly constructed Atleti side this season? Simeone is still implementing a four-man midfield with a back four and two centre forwards, but instead of sticking with a conventional flat four in midfield, he has transitioned the side into playing a 4-4-2 diamond. Thomas Partey plays as a deep single pivot in the Regista row, tasked with collecting the ball of the defenders and moving the play forward while sitting behind the play and maintaining his position when Atletico go forward. Sal and Coco sit either side, both playing the Carolero row, meaning that they have the responsibility of moving out to the flanks to close down the wide players, as in the diamond system the two forwards, whilst they do move wider out of possession, do not track back which does leave space on the flanks for Sal and Coco to cover. If you are wondering what exactly the Carolero midfield row is, subscribe to the channel because we will be releasing player rows, explained videos, tactically analysing the row with examples. Lamar sits ahead of the central midfield three, in behind the two centre forwards, Jao Felix and either Alvaro Morata or Diego Costa. When in possession, Atletico looked far better in the build-up phase with Hermoso, Renan Lodi and Kieran Trippier being a lot better on the ball than Lucas Hernandez, Godin or Santiago Arias were in the back four last season. Hermoso is an excellent long passer which enables Atleti to switch the play and transition the attack forward quickly with a direct ball from the centre-back. When playing a double pivot in the centre of midfield in a 4-4-2, it was easy for Saez to push two midfielders up onto Partey and Koke to cut off the passing lanes into them and stop them being able to get on the ball, thereby forcing Atletico to play long balls upfield. Playing with three central midfielders, Atletico have a lot more width in their build-up, as Sol and Koke move wide and drop deep to stretch the opposition's pressing structure, making it easier for Atletico to advance in the opposition's half. With the extra defensive cover of the three-man base in midfield, the two fullbacks, Renan Lodi and Kieran Trippier, advance a lot higher up the pitch than Arias and Lucas did last season, which forces the opposition's wide players deep, thereby giving Sol and Koke more space, who are excellent deep line creators with their passing range and vision. The signings of Kieran Trippier and Renan Lodi seems to have been done with a calculated view of using Alvaro Morata's aerial ability, as both players excellent deep crosses and as we saw at Chelsea with Azpilicueta's crosses from deep on the right flank, Morata is exceptional at moving into space and then finishing with his head when presented with this sort of service. The two forwards Jao Felix and either Costa or Morata play different roles. Morata and Costa lead the line playing as advanced forwards, positioning themselves along the back line to look to make runs in behind the defenders or into the channels providing an option for the Atletico Madrid midfielders to play a long pass over the top of the defence. Joe Felix is more of a trek Trequatista, being given the freedom to roam into deep positions in the half spaces or out wide when he feels like he can isolate a fullback. He is excellent at dropping off the front line, collecting the ball and transitioning the attack forward with his dribbling ability, which is an asset that is new to this Atletico Madrid side. Lamar is now playing in a more central position in a Nagancho row than he was last season, he is playing as one of the inverted wide players. The diamond shape forces the opposition's midfield to stretch wider when pressing Koke and Sal, which creates more space in behind for Lamar to move into. With Atletico now playing with a central attacking midfielder in behind the two strikers, they are able to link the attack a lot more efficiently, and with three attackers in central advanced positions, they are able to make runs in behind the back line from those central positions, which wasn't really an option when the wide players were in the 4-4-2. When out of possession Simeone's side are flexible, if they want to press aggressively from the build-up, they can use a man-to-man -man pressing system with Felix and Morata pushing up onto the centre-backs and Lamar moving onto the deep line midfielder. Koke, Sal, Partey and even Llorente when he comes into the side all have excellent engines, are aggressive and have the tackling ability which makes that midfield three perfectly suited to a high aggressive press. Alternatively, Simeone could use his signature deep defensive block by pulling Lamar over to the left side and creating a flat four in midfield with the two forwards dropping deeper to create a box around the opposition central midfielders. Simeone has begun to tactically reinvent this Atletico side by focusing on getting attacking midfielders higher up the pitch in central positions. Using Koke and Sal's fantastic passing ability and engines to perform this Carolero row, and by bringing players in like Trippier, Lodi and Hermoso who give Afleti a lot more ball playing ability and creativity down the flanks when on the ball, but also the option of playing a higher defensive line with the likes of one friend Felipe Luiz and Gordon no longer in that back line. 
Whether Simeone's tactical alterations will make them a more formidable force in La Liga and in the Champions League will have to be seen. With three wins from three in the league so far, it looks like Simeone's new system is beginning to have an effect. Thank you for watching, remember to like and share the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and check out some of our other videos as well including the first episode of Players The Streets Will Never Forget which is on Addo to Wrapped, and also the first episode of our Player Rose Explained series which was on the Trek Batista.